Yeah, you was decent. Yo, I have a crazy battle, man. And I had this last month. So I'm up here, all the static, talking about this is like the new hype. And I had this battle like a month ago. Are you kidding me, Kashif? So anyway, my opposition leads up with High Dragon. switches straight out into Ferrothorn. I'm thinking like, yo, I don't want my Buffalo to take Rocky Helmet and or... Iron bars right away, so I'm gonna switch out into my Tyranitar just to see what he will switch out into either Amoongus and or his Ferrothorn because my Tyranitar does have the safety goggles and I can hit the Amoongus with the Ice Beam and or a Fire Blast. So he switches out assuming that I would pack the Fire Blast, which I actually do pack on my Tyranitar. So now I'm just gonna bring in my Count Gowder and I'm thinking like here, I wanna go for the knockoff so bad, but at the same time, he could actually go for like the Dracometer predicting me to go and use knockoff since he resists it, even though his item will be destroyed. But at the same time, he would be able to inflict some damage even though I am Assault Vest. So it's more damage and it's important because, you know, damage is damage. And he brings in his Alamola and this thing actually, it's quite interesting actually because this makes me think that it's usually the foot is usually on the opposite side like I'm usually the one who's bringing unorthodox things and or uncommon sets in the face of my OU battle like Hariyama, Golduck, even Bufalon and now my opponent in this case scenario is actually doing the same thing that I would do and I'm carrying things like freaking Tyranitar and Conkelder so it's like the foot is on the other shoe which is quite interesting because in this case scenario like I was about to say before I cut my own self off this fish Oh my god, screw this palindrome, man, because this thing got on my last nerves, man. The physical wall is so, man, let me tell you. So now he's just going to go and wish protect, right? I guess draining down my drain punches. I did want to knock off his leftovers. I guess it'll be a little bit more helpful later on. I never know. So now I'm just going to switch out into my Thunderous Insinuating. I'm going to go for the Thunderball, which I don't do. I make a double switch back into my Conqueror just to see what he will switch out into. Primarily his uh, Dragon because I would actually want to go for the Thunderball and he would just recover the damage, assuming that he will bring in his his high dragon to sponge the thunderball so that's what i thought he was gonna do hence my switch out into conqueror i switch right back out into tyranitar just to block the spore in case he wanted to go for the spore because my tyranitar is packing the safety goggles but instead he goes right back out into his ala momola and i actually pronounced it correctly oh my god but that's a minuscule matter and a factor of what's going on right now because this thing i'm just here trying to predict when he's gonna bring in his amoongus and or his high dragon i mean i don't even know why he would bring in high dragon in the face of conqueror but you know, Amoongus primarily so I can knock off his Black Sludge and then afterwards go back into Tyranitar to block the Spore and then make a double switch. But that's not happening. He's just staying and go for the Wish to replenish his HP while he's dwindling down my own HP with consistent Waterfall. So I'm like, you know something? I have to eventually switch out if I want to save Conqueror for a little bit later on. So I'm just going to do just that. Despite me knowing that he's going to want to go for the Waterfall, I'll switch into my Bufalant. And it doesn't do too much to Bufalant. Bufalant is a monster. So I decide to now go for the Head Charge as opposed to predicting him to go for the Ferrothorn, which was a tough call on my behalf because I like half wanted to switch right back out into Conkelder and or something else to deal with Ferrothorn coming in and try to set up rocks in front of Bufalon's face. So now I'll go for a secondary head charge known for whether he's going to want to go for the Protect and then afterwards I switch right out into my Thunders, which is great because I'm anticipating his Ferrothorn to come into play, which takes place exactly because right now, instead of actually switching into Conkelder, which obviously does super effective damage being the Mock Punch and or the Drain Punch on to Ferrothorn, I switch out into something that I realistically won't one shot the Ferrothorn anyway. Not to say that Drain Punch would do that anyway, but since I do have the Sculpt Lens on my Thunderous, I was able to knock it out and thank God for that. That was a 25% probability of that happening, and it took place right then and there. So now he's going to bring in the Nido King, insinuating that he is Choice Scarf. I'm thinking that he's Choice Scarf because of the fact that he brought in something with a lower base speed than something that's already out in the field. Plus, I do have the Scout Lens, which I just told him afterwards. So I do have the 25% shot of critting him with the Hidden Power Ice. I knew that he was going to be Scarf. So I'll make a double switch right out into Bufalon, trying to catch the Vaporeon and or Elmola. Oh, oh my god, I pronounced it wrong this time. But the Palindrome, or the switch but now he brings in this thing to defend against my choice banded head charge that is not happening especially since earlier I knocked off your leftovers so now he's gonna bring in his Nidoking as death fodder head charge is gonna man there was no one 
for that. I so wish that I get hit him with all of that was mine, man. That was so perfect, man. Oh my god. So now I'm just gonna switch out my booth line to try to save it for Vaporeon a little bit later on because I do outspeed Vaporeon and it can still be useful to taking out one threat on his party. And after bringing in his uh, dragon, I'm gonna respond back with my Tyranitar, skillfully dodge, move out of the way. That Fire Blast is not hitting me anytime soon. It's gonna bring out his Alomomola. I have to say that's super slow. My god, that's the most difficult palindrome out of all the palindromes, man. I'm so serious. I wrote my tongue, I bite my tongue trying to pronounce this damn fish's name. I never want to see this clown again, seriously. So now, I actually make a mistake and set up late game rocks where I actually should have went for the Stone Edge. Not that Stone Edge would have hit a secondary time, but you know. <laughs> I could have actually been able to KO it at that point amount of HP, but that's alright because now he's going to predict me to go and over predict and use Hidden Power Ice, preferably because he still has Amoongus and go for the Toxic. I'm thinking that he went for the Toxic because if I went out into my Conk Outer, Conk Outer is slower, so he could just finish me off with a waterfall before he gets a guts boosted drain punch to the face. So that was actually a great play there for him to actually stay in, in a sense. Not a great scenario in this example because I was going straight for the Thunderbolt and I was able to finish it off. So now in comes his Amoongus. Amoongus is now going to show me Substitute, which is unorthodox. I've never seen that before, but that's quite interesting. Being that the Sandstorm is up, I'm not exactly worried about him going for the Giga Drain or anything like that. Uh, you saw how much damage the Sludge Bomb inflicted onto the Tyranitar. Since I have the Safety Goggles, I am going to be able to block the Spore if his Spore happens to be the last attack that he does have. So, with that being said, with all that put into perspective, he is going to turn tail and run away, and that was definitely a great game. Don't discredit him from running away. It's just He just said that, you know, uh, the battle would have been drawn out, and it's just like an impending doom in this case scenario. I kind of disagreed, but you know. Peace! What you doing? <laughs>